Okay, and are you recording? We are recording. Thank you. Okay, so uh, welcome to this morning's meeting of the Jones Library Board of Trustees. It's nice to see you all. I'm just going to ask you to signify your presence by uh, saying that you're here, Lee. Here. Tammy. Far. Here. Eugene. Here. And I'm Austin Sarat. I know of no changes or additions to the agenda. Uh, we have uh, several uh, several meeting minutes to approve. So uh, May 13th, is there a motion to approve those minutes? So moved. Second. Is there a second? Okay. Any changes or additions to the minutes? Okay. Voting to approve. Uh, Lee? Aye. Tammy? Aye. Vara? Yes. Jean? Aye. And Austin votes yes. Uh, May 20. Motion to approve the minutes of May 20. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay, just hold the line one second, please. Hold the line one second, please. Sorry to hold you up. Okay, are there any um, any edits on those minutes? Okay, voting to approve, Lee? Aye. Tammy? Farah? Yes. Eugene? Yes. And Austin votes yes. Okay, next in the packet are, let me just get them. Those are the only two sets of minutes. Yeah, we'll I do... know, I'm just, I'm just okay. looking, right. Okay, so that's it. Okay, uh, we now have an opportunity for public comment. Any member of the public wishes to speak if they would raise their virtual hand? Okay, I have two members of the public that wish to speak. We're gonna um, we're gonna hold it at that. Okay, Jeff Lee. Hi, thanks. This is Jeff Lee from South Amherst. Yeah, I would just like to question what the trustees' plan is for conducting a review of historic um, adverse effects to the library, considering the uh, plan changes brought by the uh, renovation expansion. Um, there are, I understand, specific laws that require a review of adverse effects. And I've heard that the Mass Historic Commission has identified several adverse effects to the library by the previous design. Um, the new design, which will encompass the recent value engineering changes, will bring about even more adverse effects, I would assume. So I'm just curious what your plans are as far as um, providing the public a chance to weigh in on the adverse effects to the library. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next, um, Arlie. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Well, thank you. Good morning. Um, I just want to say lately, the talk about the library just seems to be boiling down to cost value engineering arguments about what's more expensive, you know, the repair or this or that. I'd like to take the conversation out of that realm for a moment. You know, the Jones Library is on the national and state registers of historic places. It's up the street from the Emily Dickinson House. And it's these historic features, which I know are expensive to, you know, care for and maintain 
but it makes it an interesting and special place. And now the talk from the proponents is, it's not about the building, it's about the people. And the MBLC says, it's not about the building, it's about the programming and services. And I think this is a false dichotomy. It's about both. It feels very different to walk into the Jones, even as it is now, than to walk into a Walmart. And I know this is an exaggerated example, but the point is, is that the building does also matter to the people. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, thank you. Thanks for coming and thanks for your comment. Uh, Maria Kapiki just raised her hand. This is the last public comment. Maria? Thank you. Um, that was actually, and I didn't raise my hand. I'm on my phone. It might have registered as such. But um, while I'm here, <clears throat> I want to absolutely second everything that Arlie and Jeff have pointed out. Uh, I'm also going to once again ask that you read out the names of the people who are in attendance. Uh, and it would be even better if you would let us see who's in attendance at these public meetings. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Maria. Thanks for your comment. Okay, um, next is uh, the president's report. So we have uh, finalized our third memorandum of agreement with the town, uh, which as you know, allows us to do what we are now doing, which is to work with FAA on revisions uh, to the uh, plan for the renovation and expansion of the um, of of the library. Uh, I'll just transition, if you will, to the next thing. We will be meeting the Jones Library Building Committee. Will be meeting next. We'll be meeting tomorrow, uh, and we'll be discussing where we are in the uh, process of uh, revising our. Um, revising our plan. Okay, any questions either about the MOA or about the building committee? Okay. Uh, I do want to just say um, so that the people, members of the public who are in attendance, uh, we will, of course, be doing uh, what is um, required and appropriate uh, to go through a review of all of the changes that um, are being proposed uh, with all of the appropriate bodies. We have several meetings uh, already uh, on tap uh, to meet with uh, various town committees, um, including the Amherst Historical Commission. Okay. Next is a report from Buildings and Facilities. Or... Um, thanks, Austin. Uh, we met, I think, a few weeks ago, and most of our discussion was around um, the repair-only option, though there were a couple of things before that. I think the carpet cleaning happened, right, Sharon? Hope that went really well. Uh, yeah. And then uh, there were a few leaks that were discussed. And I know that George had talked about trying to find a new plumber and he was going to speak with Jeremiah. I don't know if anything has happened since then. Uh, the plumber has started uh, their work, yes. Okay, thanks. Uh, and besides that, Sharon and George discuss what the process would be going forward. I think they have they have an outline where the plan would be uh, from fall 24 to 32, all this, uh, if the bids come in too high and the project doesn't go through. And it was basically, we basically discussed the roof, the asbestos in the children's room and the HVAC system, correct? And the, the elevator, the front elevator. But this would be over a period of 10 years. Sharon, am I? Yeah. 
And um, so the process is that they there would have to be a feasibility study. I think Sharon and George had, have a plan set that they've outlined for Paul. And that's where we are right now. We have a meeting again next week. We did discuss that this repair only option would not um, help at all with getting a new space for the teens or doing anything to the children's room or any of the other accessibility uh, features that the new plan would, would have, uh, the renovation expansion would have for the library. I think that's it. Okay. Questions about the buildings and facilities. So far, could you, oh, Lee, were you going to ask something? You're muted. I'm muted. <laughs> Sorry. Um, would the the 10 year plan, if the project doesn't go through, address any of the issues in special collections? Sharon, I don't believe. I, it doesn't. Um... Uh, uh, well, it would replace the HVAC system. So it yes, okay. it would fix the, the leaks there. I, okay. Basically what we're looking at, and th this is just a draft, um, you know, when, when going through the JCPC process, it depends on what other needs that the town has and, and you know, what money is available when. So uh, basically what we've, what we've presented is in the first year, we would uh, aim for hiring an architect to, uh, for a feasibility study uh, for the HVAC replacement and the fire alert system um, and the asbestos abatement in the kids' room. And then the following year, the work would be done. So that's kind of the, the way we were doing it. Feasibility study, work. Feasibility study, work. Um, and, and we'll just have to go with it and see how that goes. And then at, at some point, ADA kicks in. Um, and so that's when, you know, the bigger expenses uh, are, are, yeah, come to reality. Also, I think Sharon, this the uh, this this option would involve a couple of uh, relocations, right? And like the library moving to interim spaces because it would be done in stages. Yeah. So it depends on. Like the HVAC, for example, anytime the walls are going to be opened up and the asbestos is going to be, you know, expo when the staff would be exposed to the asbestos, we would have to get out. Now, there's a difference between do we only have to get out for a few days, then we can just, you know, operate out of the branches. But if we have to get out for an entire, you know, six months to a year or more, that that would require us to think harder about an interim space and and a moving company and all of that. And um, it, and that would have to happen a couple of times. Like ADA accessibility, that's, we're all ha gonna have to get out and, and do that work. Uh, same thing with the atrium and the roof and the abatement for the rest of the building, we'd have to get out during that. So it, it does involve moving in and out a few times over 10 plus years. Uh, Farah or Sharon, uh, could you help us just understand the following hypothetical? We decide on a date in the future that we are not going forward with the renovation and expansion plan. For purposes just of the question, let's say that's December 1st of this year. But again, a purely hypothetical. How long... Uh, do you anticipate it would take to begin to move to the first step in this um, in this alternative plan? So we could hire uh, um, a contractor to replace the fire alert system and the sprinklers relatively quickly. You know, we'd have to we'd we'd have to secure three different three different quotes, and that that's relative relatively simple. Um, so that work could happen within probably before six months, I, I would think, um, the feasibility study. So that wouldn't actually be actual work on the building. That would just be coming up with, with documents. Um, and that could happen relatively quickly as well. So I'm going to throw this out there. It's just a guesstimate six months. I was hoping that you might just 
um, remind us of the steps that we would have to go through for either or both of those? Yeah, so putting an RFP together for a feasibility study, you know, George has done this numerous times in his 15 plus years here. Um, uh, that just gets advertised and we we take in the information and low bidder wins. Um, same thing with the fire alert system. Uh, George would, would seek uh, quotes from three different vendors and low bidder wins. Uh, again, I'm sorry to just press this, but I, I want to be as clear as I can be. Uh, the RFP process generally takes how long? Uh, you know, I don't I don't have the numbers off the top of my head. You have to advertise for X right. number of days. Let's say it's two weeks. Um, you open the bids. You're awarding the contract. I, I don't it's not very so, long. Yeah, I uh, thank you. I, I didn't expect actually to have the. I think in the next iteration, the Buildings and Facilities Committee should put together the timeline okay. for the first step. Um, what would it involve? We'd have to issue an RFP. It has to be um, vetted by the town that takes whatever. It has to be available for how long it's come in. So just so the Board of Trustees will have a clear view, uh, if we have to make the shift or what is going to be involved and roughly how long you folks estimate that it will take as we go through that process, understanding that it's not, uh, you know, these are, these are estimates, but I, I just think putting a little more meat on the bones, especially for the first year or two of what you're imagining would be helpful. Sure. Perfect. Yep. Oh, okay. Any other questions for buildings and facilities? Thank you, Farah. Thank you. Okay, Development Committee, Lee Edwards. Lee, you're muted, Lee. That's what comes of being polite and muting yourself. Uh, as I said, you've got all the information in your packet. Uh, the annual fund closed more or less in terms of funds raised where we did last year, a little under $111,000. Although I will say, that the friends have been extremely active this year in ways that are not reflected in this number. So they've done a number of events. They uh, had a big um, sale of artworks that had been donated to the friends. So that the friends do, I don't know quite, I think that money is in their account uh, at, the, at a local bank. Uh, I don't think they put it into the Woodbury Fund. Um, but it's money that is potentially available to the library should the library have a specific request. So that in fact, this annual fund number um, is low in terms of representing what's available to the library on an ad hoc basis for special requests from the friends. Um, the capital campaign, we are pretty much where we were a month ago. Um, we're still trying to adjust to um, the consequences of the, of the single bid that we got in. Uh, the Capital Campaign Committee is meeting this week. We're touring the building to try to get some uh, handle on exactly what potential value engineer changes will be made in the building um, so that we can explain it to our current and potential donors. And I'm anticipating that we're actively going to be doing a lot of tours of um, the building for potential new donors to explain to them what's going on. Um, that's pretty much it. Thank you. Thank you, Lee. Okay, questions for development committee. I have a couple of things, uh, again, just so we will, uh, everybody be clear. Sharon, in terms of the return from the annual fund, uh, how does it affect the budget going forward? Yeah, no, we're very happy. And um, so it, because of 
all the prep staff have been doing, you know, to leave the building, uh, programming had slowed down. Um, but then, you know, things turned on a dime. So programming is back at full speed and staff have been asking for more money, but there, there was a, a, a lag for a little while. Um, so we're, the budget is, is good and is great. And we're so thankful to the friends for being so, supportive and um yeah. yeah uh encouraging with with when staff come to them and say hey we'd like to try this program they've been the friends have been really great so yeah it's fine thanks and lee um i, I take it that the uh, that the capital campaign committee has been continuing to have conversations with uh donors and people who have already pledged is that accurate that is absolutely accurate, and it's uh, again, it's one of the things that can be taken up at our at the, at the friends at the capital campaign committee meeting, which is Wednesday. Um, we're trying to go back and touch base with everybody who has either given money or made a pledge to explain to them what is going on and uh, solicit their opinions. And have you started that process already? Yeah, we have, and. Um, most of the people that we have talked to, well, all of the people we have talked to, um, understand uh, that the size of the last of the only bid um, made it necessary to contemplate the kinds of value engineering changes that uh, are in hand at the moment, and. Um, I would have to say that even though some of the potential donors or actual donors, um, hang on one second. Okay, no, wait. Um, are sad about the contemplative changes. Um, they all understand that uh, if they're necessary to be made, it's necessary to make them for the sake of having a library that can actually serve the community that's actually here right now. We haven't had anybody say, um, cancel my pledge. Uh, I, I want my money back if I can't have the building that we originally planned to have. Thank you. Clara. Um, sorry, Lee, does that mean you're, are you saying that people are willing to have their pledges or their donations um transferred if if it's we have not we have not had that discussion okay. and i'm definitely not saying that okay thanks i'm just talking about the building mm -hmm. footprint that the the programmatic footprint that the mblc uh has supported which is unchanged right. by the value engineering that's all that we're talking about we have not had any conversations about um going forward with any other footprint or, or repairs. Thank you. Can I just say what I think I heard? Because I'm not sure I understood it. So or when you referred to transfer, you were referring to people who pledge money for the renovation expansion plan, who now might be willing to leave the money there if all we were doing was repair. Is that correct? Yes, you put it, but in okay. I just wanted to understand because there was something, yeah, that, that got that got lost at the word transfer. So yeah, okay. it was the wrong word. I will think about no, no. the correct word, and I'm sure it will come to me. <laughs> okay, all right. Thank you, thank you, Lee. Thanks for the work that you and the development committee and the capital campaign committee are doing. Okay, PPP, Tammy. Um, the only thing I have to report is that I'm collecting um, uh, evaluations. I appreciate those of you who have already sent your evaluation to me. I will be um, at the Jones in the middle of July to pick up anything that the staff have done, uh, the public, um, the friends. There are boxes for uh, in the staff room for people in a box in and uh, forms available in the in the main part of the library. So um, about July 
uh, 20th, I'll have everything and I'll start working. And I hope to have a report for the August PPP meeting and then to bring the, the draft evaluation to the board in September. So that's all I have to report. Um, I don't know, Farah, do you have any Jedi? I know you're meeting this Friday. Yeah, we had to cancel our last meeting because we didn't have a quorum. And um, yeah, I'll have something to report at our next meeting. Thanks. Okay, that's all for PPP. Great. Any questions for um, for Tammy? Okay. Thank you, Tammy. Uh, Sharon, you're going to bring us up to date on our budget, please. Yeah. Um, so a, a few things. So we are in a new fiscal year. Yay. Uh, FY24 ended fine. Um, no, no fireworks. Uh, it will take a couple of months to, to completely, um, uh, close out the books, but but we're good. Um, some areas that we overspent on uh, software and maintenance agreements are building systems, the elevators, plumbing, um, and refuse collection, you know, as a result of a, a lot of the weeding that, that staff did. Uh, what we underspent on is, uh, general building maintenance, you know, some things that we were hoping not to have to spend money on because we thought we'd be moving out, um, natural gas, uh, we had a warm winter, um, and grounds maintenance, same, same thing with the grounds maintenance. Uh, I also wanted you all to know that the $550,700 has been transferred from the endowment to a Vanguard treasury money market fund. And that's, uh, the money that we'll be using to pay the bills for FAA over the summer as they do their redesign work. Um, and regarding FY25, I will have to update, um, uh, that uh, we'll have to update our FY25 budget uh, because we're going to be in the Jones uh, for a longer period of time than what we had thought when we crafted the budget uh, because of the building project. Um, so, for example, we have had to sign maintenance contracts for, you know, elevator and HVAC, that kind of a thing. So um, I'll, I'll be presenting that soon. As of... June 30th, the endowment was valued at $9,279,954.78. And the Woodbury Fund was valued at $746,046.28. And the one motion that I'd like you all to vote on is Alan Carpenter recently passed away. A uh, big supporter of the library, big supporter of the the, the building project, a, a wonderful gentleman. Um, and he has a, a bequest that he, um, he's left to the library. It's valued at approximately $6,700. Um, it is in uh, a, a Schwab account, and we would like to move it into... Um, the library's capital campaign fund. And, and so I'm wondering if you all would approve that. So the, the motion is to restrict the Alan, Car Alan Carpenter's bequest uh, totaling approximately $6,700 to the library's capital campaign fund. Um, so I'm gonna move that. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Is there any discussion? Sharon, could you just say out loud exactly when you say the library's capital campaign fund, could you just remind us what it is you're actually talking about? Uh I'm glad you asked. Uh, we, I basically, I, I left this motion as general as possible. We, we would like to restrict the funds to the, the project. Um, it because it has to be moved. Uh, the money actually physically has to be moved. Um, John and I, John Shannon, the business mm -hmm. manager, uh, we wanted to talk with the capital campaign committee to make sure, uh, which which account we would be moving it into, whether it was the library's capital, uh, library's Vanguard account versus the friend's uh, Vanguard account. So that's why I left it open. So where it will sit, 
we're not sure yet, but we want uh-huh. to be able to say that those funds will be restricted to the, the project. So I don't have a, I'm just trying to understand what this motion is trying to do. So do you mean to say that the desire is to restrict the bequest for use uh, in the library's capital campaign? Correct. Yeah. Okay. That's a little clearer than to the library's capital campaign fund. I see. Okay. Since, I, again, that's why I asked you, like, what fund are we talking about? So would it be would it be appropriate to say that this motion should say to restrict Alan Carpenter's bequest totaling $6,700 for use in the library's capital campaign? Beautiful. Yep. So uh, I'm, I'm proposing that the motion be amended to read that way. Is there a second to that? Second. Okay. Now, for just so we'll do it, we want to proceed on the amendment. So, is your comment far about the amendment? Okay. So, any questions about the amendment? Okay. On the question of adopting the amendment, Lee. Aye. Tammy. Aye. Eugene. I think I have to abstain from this one because it involves a capital campaign. So I'll abstain. Farmer? Yes. And Austin votes yes. Okay, so now we're back to the now amended motion. Far. Uh, my only question is, if the project does not go through, would, would that mean that the money could be, I'm not going to use the word transferred, I'm going <laughs> to use the word moved to use for the repair only option? Correct. Yeah. So if if we end up having to go with plan B, um, there's going to be a, a long list of accounts uh, with with totals and where they came from. And and the trustees will. You all will be responsible for approving what goes back where. Uh, and this is a perfect example. This uh, this is you are restricting these funds so you can restrict them in a different way another time and that's true for lots of the other accounts uh, so yes you guys can do whatever you want with this money thank you but again just so i'll be clear we would have to take a subsequent action yes. right now this is restricted uh in a particular way if we want to change its use uh we would have to change its use. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Sharon, can you just help us kind of um, figure out where we are in the budget? So uh, you haven't closed out, I know, but from what you gave us, it looked like um, we may actually have some money left over, or did I misunderstand that? We do, yeah. So, do you want to help us understand that? Uh, I'm I'm not sure that I can. Uh, I, I I couldn't give you the exact amount. Um, I uh, yeah, but that is true almost every fiscal year it's it would be very rare when you came down to um not having some money left over that allows me and the business manager to sleep at night um uh, so it looks and, like and, in the i'm sorry to interrupt you may i please so it looks like in the updated summary that you gave us that we had spent roughly two two million six hundred fifty two thousand dollars Yep. And that we either had or anticipating revenue of two million nine hundred and ninety four thousand dollars. Yep. And then it looks like uh, you anticipated spending another two hundred eighty six thousand dollars. Yeah. Uh, right. And then there would be some additional revenue to be received. Yep. OK. So 
again, I just wanted to point out that uh, while those numbers look like they're going to come in pretty close, you're anticipating there will be some uh, some surplus, if you will. Correct. Yeah. Good. And you want to remind us what happens to that surplus? It, it just sits in the accounts. Right. Okay. Any questions for Sharon, either on budget or on um, investment? Now, uh, did we actually vote on the motion? Yeah. No, you need to do that. Yeah. yeah, we voted on the amendment. Thank you. Okay, so now we're voting on the amended motion uh, about the restricting the bequest. Lee? Hi. Tammy? Hi. Cara? Yes. Uh, Eugene is going to abstain. You need to say it, Eugene. Abstain. Thank you. And Austin votes yes. Okay, next item on the agenda is a report from the Friends. Good morning. Briefly, um, everyone on the screen has attended a Friends of the Jones Library meeting in the last few months, and I'm extremely grateful for the quick response to my call in that regard, and I think we're squared away for calendar year. 2024. So thank you very much for that. Um, we are always looking for new members of the Friends Executive Board. And so if trustees see people who would be good members of the Friends of the Jones Library Executive Board, we'd appreciate hearing about that. Um, and I would, um, anybody is um, of, of various abilities and skill sets are fine, uh, but I would emphasize fiscal, financial, and 21st century bookkeeping acumen. Um, th th that's something that would be helpful, just anticipating perhaps some future needs for the, the Jones Executive Board. And we, have, uh, we haven't we have met since your last meeting, um, um, but we are meeting tonight um, at, the, um, at the, I believe the Woodbury Room. Thank you. Can you tell us who is currently on the Jones, the Friends of the Jones Library um, Executive Board? I was afraid you were going to ask that. Um, Lee is going to have to help me on this. Uh, um, uh, Nancy Campbell, um, Marion Walker, me. Uh, I believe Kent Ferber is uh, on the, I think he's on the, no, I'm sorry. Thank you for shaking your head, Sharon. Um, um, Nat Larson. Uh, I'm sorry. Nat Larson. Nat Larson. Um, uh, Kathy Lanza. Um, uh, Jen Fox. Um, Lee, can you yep. help me out here? Kelly Kelly Irwin. Kelly Irwin, absolutely yes. Um, that's about. Uh, I had to do that off the top of my head. Let's see. Uh, oh, um, Carol Johnson. Right. And. Um, one more. <laughs> really? <laughs> Elaine Donahue. Oh, okay. right. Oh, of how course. could I forget, a, how could I forget Elaine? Okay. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. And Lewis Mainzer. And Lewis Mainzer, yes. Okay. All right. Thank you, Austin. I'm sorry. I promise there'll be no more memory tests. Um, <laughs> yeah, that, that, no more. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I, you know, I, I, if I have to take a memory test to qualify as a member of the executive board, there could be some problems. Has the, have the, has there been any discussion in the friends board about, um, the plan to try to uh, revise the plan for the, uh, renovation and expansion? Uh, I do not believe there has been any discussion about that. All right. Thank you. Because there hasn't been a meeting since that. Okay. Right. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions for the friends? So it is wonderful to go to the friends meetings. Um, uh, the dedication of the people on the friends to the, the library system in the town of Amherst is um, remarkable. Uh, we had the privilege of attending, I, I believe it's your annual meeting. At the Munson. Um, at the Munson Library, uh, where 
among other things, we saw a fabulous presentation uh, about all the wonderful things that are in the in special collections about our building, um, including there was a sword, uh, which was remarkable and great to see. So it was a wonderful occasion to see the support that the friends give to the library and have the occasion of being reminded yet again that the Jones Library has been changed several times. Um, the building that we all love is not the building as it was exactly when it opened, um, you know, almost 100 years ago. It has changed. It's been renovated. It's been expanded. Uh, it's been added to. Uh, it's, been it's been repurposed at various in spaces. Uh, it's been repurposed in various of its spaces. So it was just wonderful to see it. I mean, seeing the pictures and seeing the plans that were in place and that were used and... Uh, so it is a reminder that the way you love a building is you invest in that building's well-being and key to investing in its well-being is making sure that that building or that facility is adequate to meet the needs of the users and it was just great uh, seeing seeing all of those pictures and remember being reminded of all the plans and all the places in which this building that we all love has been has been changed okay sharon director's report uh, yeah so i've said the entire time that i've been here the reason people come to the jones library and not the you know hundreds of other options is because of the staff uh, not because of the building. And speaking of the staff, so the, the theme for this year's summer reading program is read, renew, repeat, and the staff have put together an incredible summer reading program for people of all ages. Um, and and we've, um, we, we've created the program so that it's the same across all three buildings. Um, so you can, you can mix and match to your heart's desire. And I really just want to thank the staff. Um, they didn't have a lot of time, but, um, but they pulled something really meaningful together and they love it. They really, they love it. So thank you staff. Um, and the one uh, other request that I'm asking for you to approve has already been approved by the board of the friends. Uh, the motion is that $21.20, $2,120 be withdrawn from the Woodbury fund uh, to pay for adult summer reading and programming at the North Amherst library. Okay. So I th a member of the board has to move that motion. So moved. Okay. Is there a second to the motion? Second. Thanks. Okay. Any discussion of the motion? Okay. Uh, voting on the motion, Lee? Aye. Tammy? Aye. Barra? Yes. Jean? Aye. And Austin votes yes. Sharon, anything else from the director? No, that's it. So I wanted to ask you a couple of questions about other than programming, what's going on? What's going on in our libraries? Uh, what's going on in North Amherst? What's going on in Munson? What's going on in the Jones? I mean, it's a library that we're running. So uh, what's going on? Other uh, than the programming? Yeah, patrons using these facilities. Um, uh, at what rate uh, have you noticed a discernible, a discernible decline in the amount of traffic into the uh, in in the building? So, just give us a little bit of a sense of what's going on. Hmm. No, um, it's other pretty, than the programming. Yeah, the um, circulation is steady. Uh, level. Um, uh, people at the north are are excited to be able to start reserving the meeting room there. 
Um, but I, I don't think that's up and running yet. Uh, at, at the South, you know, it's the beauty of branch libraries is you just, you, you get this really wonderful one-on-one -on -one service. You walk in, Hey, Sharon, um, here is your John Grisham book that you've been waiting for. I know you didn't ask for it, but we knew you'd want it. Um, and that's awesome. And, and here at the Jones, it's, it's the same, you know, think, Thank goodness our air conditioning is working beautifully. Yay. It's really important. This 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 summer hasn't even really started yet, and it's been a hot one. Um, so having the library for air conditioning is really essential. Um, they come in, they use the computers. Um, uh, they're requesting books. It's it's kind of like it's a library. Things are great. People are happy. People are happy people are happy that's pretty awesome there's a um uh one of our staff members Roxanne Boyd has has one of her loves is art and so she has really created thanks to the friends funding um a pretty amazing art program and it, a lot of it is is based on take and makes she puts packets together and you take it home and you do it uh and, and she's doing a lot of things here in the buildings as well at, at all three of the buildings and the power of art is it's very healing and um between the politics of you know local state national yeah. worldwide um art these these art programs are really touching people and so that's exciting to talk about too. Uh, for, before I call on you, I just wanted to ask: Do you um, do you get uh, complaints about uh, the materials that we have? Oh, you shouldn't have this on the shelf. You shouldn't have that on the shelf. We have in the past, but not not recently. Um... No, Amherst is very is very progressive in that way. Um uh so not that not that I can think of in recent okay. memory. All right, thank you, Far. Jan, um is the bookmobile or the carts are they out at any of the outdoor events? I mean, I don't I haven't been keeping track of what's going on in town recently. Yeah, Linda does her traveling cart. She just did it over the weekend. Where did she go? I'm already forgetting what event it was. But yes, anytime anytime there's event in town, uh she and and usually a member of the youth services team, uh they show up with the cart and they hand out the books uh, you don't need a library card uh, and again that's thanks to friends funding as well thank you thank you okay any other questions for sharon okay let's just remind ourselves sharon when is the next trustees meeting how does monday august 12th sound not good for me We can find a new date then. Do I hear the nineteenth? Um, and we would be meeting at nine a.m. again. Yeah, that doesn't work for me, unfortunately. How about the twenty? No, the twenty-sixth doesn't work for me. How about the fifth? Fifth of. August? Yeah. Oh. Is Lee saying no to that? No, it, it's uh, as of the moment, it's okay with me. Does the 5th of August work for everybody else? Now, I want to remind us that if all goes according to plan, we should have a sixth member. Uh, of, of the board um we will be meeting with the town council on july 15th i believe uh and hopefully we'll be select have selected a new a new board member okay so if everybody would put into their calendars that we will meet on monday august 5th um at 9 a.m sharon perfect 
All right, hold on. Does that work for you, Farah? Yeah, I just had a quick question maybe for uh, Austin. Um, so when we meet on the 15th, we are interviewing people interested in, in the in the in joining the board as well as voting to the best of my understanding of the procedure we will be meeting with anyone interested in serving on the jones library board of trustees they will be given an opportunity to make a statement they will be they will be questioned and then at the end of all of that uh the jones library and the town council so to speak vote as one Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I think we are. I think we are done. Thank you all for your good work, Sharon. Thank you very much. And uh, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.